actually had a motorbike accident um, when I was 21. Uh, I literally came out of university back home in the um, in UK and then uh, yeah did my motorbike license and then 12 days later I uh, didn't make a corner. I played badminton um, to quite a high level. Uh, literally travelled as a junior like most weekends with my parents like good training. Um, I also had a love of horse riding as well so kind of my uh, my love was split between the two, but tennis was just kind of a recreational thing at school. Um, very, very occasionally did I ever pick up a racket. So I went to hospital, had my rehab, um, and when I came out from there, um, I literally bought my first chair from Peter Norfolk. He's the, he was the world number one uh, quad wheelchair tennis player. Uh, we got talking, he heard that I play badminton, so I suppose it's hand-eye coordination, and he sort of said, you know, come and have a go at tennis. It's a, you know, there's a proper tour, travel all over the world. Um, and uh, I tried it and, and loved it, and then, you know, maybe six months later, I took it up seriously. I went to Beijing, which was really uh, an amazing experience. And then, obviously, when London was the host games for the Paralympics, uh, which is obviously our home country, it was, you know, it was, I didn't realize quite the extent of how important it was. Um, but when we played there, you know, the, the crowd, were so supportive, you know, they, uh, they cheered for the, the foreign players, but as soon as like a British player came on, you know, the kind of the whole stadium erupted, you know, and 5,000 people pretty much cheering for you was uh, phenomenal. When I first took up wheelchair tennis, um, I'm quite a high level paraplegic, so I'm paralyzed from T4, which in the women's game, I'm pretty much the worst, or one of the worst, like disabled um, sort of women. Um, when I first started, like the Federation, you know, it was probably, I was gonna struggle because there's no other top players that are with my disability. Uh, you know, and the game's very fast and, you know, I've, I've had to work really hard. But when I qualified for Beijing, uh, or when I got to the number one in, in the UK, that was a, kind of like a real target and a, a real struggle to get to. And then I came up the rankings and I qualified for Beijing. Um, and then, yeah, my, my target was to win a medal at London. Um, you know, to win a medal in your home games is, it's kind of one of those things that you just kind of will remember for the rest of your life. I got to the quarters in the singles and then in the doubles we got the, the bronze medal match. Um, a really ugly match but three hours of tennis against the Thai girls uh, and yeah we uh, saved two match points against us and then um, I served it out to, to win so amazing experience. Finding wheelchair tennis has, um, has really helped me kind of overcome my disability. Um, like I say, I'm, I'm quite a high level and, you know, you kind of suddenly think, what am I going to do with my life? You know, whether you're going to work or um, what activities can I do? Because everything I did was revolved around, you know, kind of using my legs, like horseback riding, um, independence and just going out and doing stuff. And the wheelchair tennis travels, you know, takes you all over the world, um, you know, Australia, over here in the States, uh, to Europe. So it's an amazing, amazing sport to get into. It's faced lots of challenges, you know, travel's not easy for someone in a chair. Um, and you just overcome stuff and, and now you kind of have that experience of life's all right, you know, like the fact you have a disability, there's normally a way of overcoming things. Um, stairs are a little bit tough, but generally like there's a way around it and there's so much that you can experience and enjoy. I've met a lot of people through tennis um, and like I've been inspired by those that I meet, like, you know, Esther Vergeer, she's a, a phenomenal ambassador for the sport. Um, I love the training and I love the competition and you know I've met so many people that I wouldn't otherwise have met and you know, there's a girl that I met who's um, I think 11 years old from in London um, she came to watch the Wimbledon uh, wheelchair tennis and uh, she's tiny you know she's probably she's probably about maybe this tall and um, completely dependent I think on her parents at the moment but she comes she she comes and talks and she's just She's lovely and, you know, she sends me messages and, you know, we're kind of in touch. Just, uh, you know, how she's enjoyed, like, the Paralympics she came to watch. Um, and there's been quite a few sort of, I think, kids with a disability that have been in touch and just said they came to watch the Paralympics, they've heard about it and they want to take up the sport. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's great that people are so humbled by it and, uh, and it inspires others to, to take it up.